Hello, my name is Daniel Germanario. Today's video is going to be about grading and log footage within Premiere Pro. We've had a lot of requests for a tutorial on how to go about doing this within Premiere. Um, today's tutorial is actually going to show you a way to do it without using the provided N-Log LUT. Now, you may be wondering why I wouldn't want to use the LUT. Well, LUTs in the general sense are designed to work within a very specific set of parameters. Now, if your footage deviates from those parameters, it won't necessarily give you the desired result. The way I'm going to show you today is a more general approach to go about using N-Log footage and it's a way that's gonna provide you with more flexibility and more control over the end result of your footage. It does take a couple of extra steps. However, I think it's more worthwhile to do it this way. So let's dive right in. Now, I'm gonna be doing this in uh, the latest version of Premiere. Uh, so it may not look exactly the way that yours does. And I've also dropped a clip onto my timeline already. It is of my friend Lisa. She was kind enough to let me shoot some video content of her. Um, before, um, before today's recording. So the first step here is um, I actually want to go into uh, the project manager here and find the, the clip itself. Now the reason for that is um, something you may not be aware of. N-Log footage is actually recorded in Rec 2020. And if I actually go into the footage here and go to modify interpret footage, you're gonna see this page here. We're gonna ignore the entire top of it. We only care about color management at the bottom. Now here you could even input the LUT if you wanted to. Like I said today, I'm not going to. And right now it's set to use media color space from file and it says Rec 709. That's why you're getting this kind of weird color because it's actually not Rec 709. So we're gonna override it. I'm gonna change the color space override from Rec 709 to Rec 2020. Now when I hit okay, you're gonna notice the colors changed. Um, it's pretty drastic on my screen. I hope the recording, um, once it gets uploaded to YouTube, will show you that change as well. Um, but it's a pretty significant change. The colors are already beginning to look a lot more um, like they were shot. So from here, what I'm gonna do is jump into my basic corrections. Now I like to do my basic corrections for like white balance and basic exposure adjustments. Um, on the footage itself. And then what I'll do when I wanna be more creative with the footage is I'll drop an adjustment layer on top uh, of this, uh, this particular clip. So I'm gonna start off, like I said, with uh, making some changes to my exposure. But before I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna open up my scopes page here. And I'm just going to bring out, uh, if it wants to load for me, what's going on here? Why is this happening? Oh, there we go. Just didn't want to load right. Uh, so I'm going to bring out my uh, waveform monitor. I'm not going to make use of the vector scope right now. I'm just going to use the waveform monitor. Um, so I'm going to start with just doing some basic exposure adjustments. Now I find with uh, this approach, the best thing to do right off the bat is just grab your contrast slider and really crank it up. Um, you don't necessarily have to go all the way to 100, um, but just pulling it all the way and seeing, okay, maybe that's a little too much contrast. I'm going to dial it back a bit to somewhere right around maybe here. Looks pretty good, pretty happy with that. I'm also gonna keep monitoring my, uh, my waveform monitor here and make sure that I'm not clipping anything because obviously I wanna make use of all of the available data. Um, so let's just take a quick look right now where we started and where we're at. We're already looking a lot closer to a finished product. And from here, I'm just gonna start making some more uh, exposure adjustments. So let's play with the highlights a bit. I'm gonna bring these down a touch because I don't want her skin tones to be very bright. I want them to look natural. Uh, so I'm going to drop the highlights a touch, maybe bring my whites up a smidge. Uh, let's see what my shadows here. Bring my shadows down a fair amount actually. Not crazy, but a good amount. And my blacks, I'm going to tie it to about there. So let's see again, we're gonna do before and after. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. That's looking a lot better. And now the last thing I wanna do before trying to be creative with my look is I actually wanna white balance this. It was shot pretty well. I did a pretty good job of white balancing this correctly on set, but it is slightly off. Um, now, again, the reason I would like to have a solid foundation is that creatively then I can start to make changes to the footage 
um, and know exactly what I'm doing. If I start with a base that isn't correctly white balanced, it makes editing things a little bit harder when you're trying to do a nice creative color grade. Um, today's video is not gonna go crazy with a, a super creative color grade because I am just trying to give you a basic understanding of how to go from the raw end log to a finished product. Um, but if that is something you would like to see, if you'd wanna see more specific tutorials on um, how to achieve certain things like that, more creative uh, effects using end log or even end raw, um, unfortunately, NRAW is only supported currently in DaVinci Resolve, um, but for example, even ProRes RAW, um, perhaps that's a future video. Just let us know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Um, but what I'm going to do, continuing on from here, is just change my waveform to vector scope. I don't need the waveform for now. I like the vector scope to be nice and big. And I like to use this a lot for white balancing. You can also make use of your parades. Um, both have their merits, both are good for particular uses. But in this case, because the white balance is pretty good, I, I'm not gonna really go into the parades. Um, I'm just gonna use my vector scope. So I'm gonna use my vector scopes. Now, the vector scope, the reason I wanna use this for white balance, it's a pretty good indicator of where my colors are sitting. And based off of this, I can see that they're slightly yellow and a little bit more green uh, than I would like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my temperature slider here, and I'm just gonna start to pull this a little to the left, just to cool my footage, just ever so slightly. And again, I'm making use of both my, my eyes in terms of looking at the footage itself as well as the vector scope and where everything's sitting here. And then like I said, I think it's just a tad on the green side, so I'm just gonna bring my magenta up a bit. So this would be somewhere around, so that's too far. I'm gonna say somewhere around here. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So let's see, before and after, before and after. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with where that looks um, or where that's sitting right now. So my next step is to start to do something a little bit more creative with it. Uh, I mean, realistically, you could stop right here. If you just want to get it to uh, look Rec. 709, you want it to be as close to the colors that you captured as possible, this is great. You can stop here, but I'm going to go just a little bit further. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit more creative. Um, what I'm actually going to do is use one of the built-in uh, creative LUTs that are available within Premiere. Now, like I said, I'm not actually going to do it within the uh, file itself on the timeline because I like to keep this clean. I like to keep this as just my basic exposure corrections and my white balance corrections, and that's it. So what I'm actually going to do is just take an adjustment layer, which I've created already, and just drop it on. Right now, it's currently blank. There's nothing going on. It's literally just an empty adjustment layer. But what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to do everything from creative down uh, to this footage. So to start with, I'm going to grab my, uh, I'm going to open up the look page here, and I'm just going to start to cycle through what some of these look like and just kind of see which one I like. Now, I know 500D Kodak 2393 is a pretty popular one, but I don't know if I want to use that one. Let's see. Definitely not going to go monochrome, and I think I'm going to avoid these. I'm going to use the actual film stock ones. I did kind of like the way that this Fuji one was looking. It is a little on the warm side, but I did like it. What about this one? Hmm. You know what? I think I might actually go with this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that. Now, one thing I'd like to mention to you is a lot of people have a tendency to go, oh, I put a look on, I put a LUT on, and you know what? It's too strong. I'm going to take my intensity and just kind of bring this back. And yeah, you're technically removing part of the LUT. It's like an opacity slider, right? But I don't necessarily agree with doing it that way. The reason being is you want to make use of the LUT. That's why you downloaded it, or in this case, are, are taking it. Um, and in this particular instance, it's a actual film stock LUT. And I want the color separation and the colors that are provided by using this film look. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start to make some changes to my original corrections here. So as I start to change these, you'll notice that the footage will change and it will become more what I personally like as my aesthetic look. Now, I think the highlights are far too strong. Um, let me actually go back into my waveform so I can get a better understanding of where things are sitting. So as you can see, the, the highlights are just really high. I personally don't like where they're sitting. I don't think they need to be this high. 
Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my highlights and just start to really bring these back. Somewhere around here, perhaps. And I think my shadows are sitting a little too dark now. So I'm just going to bring this somewhere around there. Maybe even bring my blacks up a bit. Again, I'm doing a combination of two things. I'm looking at the footage itself, and I'm looking at my waveform monitor to see where things are sitting. So I think I'm going to bring it to about there, and I'm going to bring my whites down a fair amount. Maybe somewhere there. Maybe bring my highlights back up a bit. Yeah, so somewhere around there. Let's see. How does this look? I'm actually liking that quite a bit. I think it's looking quite nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do, I find with all N-Log footage, um, the sharpness is just not 100% where I want it to be. So now that I've made those exposure adjustments, I'm going to click back on my adjustment layer, go back to creative, and I'm just going to start to play with my sharpened slider and my vibrant slider, and even maybe the saturation as well. But before I do that, I'm going to again switch back to my vector scope so I can see where the colors are sitting. And as you can see, we got this yellow, which is most likely this blanket. I mean, it's extremely yellow or mm, orangey yellow, uh, as well as these reds that are kind of peeking over here. And I'm going to make a guess that that red is most likely the book in the background here. Um, so what I want to actually do is, like I said, I'm just going to sharpen my image a touch. Nothing crazy, but I'm just going to sharpen it up a bit. And then I'm going to take my saturation slider, and I'm actually going to start to bring it down a bit. Somewhere around there, and I'm going to up my vibrance a bit to compensate a little bit for the desaturation. Yeah, so I'm liking that a lot more. Uh, it's a little bit softer. I might have even gone a little too far in the saturation, so let's see. Let's go right around in there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm liking the look of that. My next step is going to be curves. Now, there are a lot of times where I actually won't even touch this. I might even just completely skip it. Um, and sometimes I like to just play around and see what looks I can create. So, for instance, a lot of film has a kind of faded or gradual black look to it. It doesn't go like into a harsh black. Um, so what they might do is they might raise the blacks up a bit like so to give it a little bit of a fade. But you don't want it to look completely faded. So what I would might do is just kind of bring the blacks in like this. Same thing with the whites. Just kind of drag the curves down and then take the curve and bring it back up to do a kind of gradual S curve. But let's see here. You're adding a little bit more contrast that way. Do I like it? Do I not like it? These are all things that I tend to do when I'm editing. I try different things out. You know, I'm not, uh, I, I don't think anyone can go in and just nail the look on the first pass. They're going to go in, they're going to try some things, they're going to see how things look, and they'll probably end up going back again and reviewing it later. Um, I am a, a big believer in the fact that when you are grading something, even on a tight deadline, you should try to give yourself a day or two to let the footage kind of sit after you've done a grade and go back to it and review it again. Um, because when you stare at something long enough, you tend to ignore certain things or your eyes tend to get used to certain things, um, which I find can be kind of detrimental to uh, the overall color grading process. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm just going to start to play with this and see if I can get it somewhere I like. That's not bad. And maybe... Bring this somewhere around. Here. Let's see what that looks like before and after. Before and after. Hmm. I'm going to do a playthrough and see how it looks. No. I think that's too, too strong. I think this looks better. It just had too much 
punch to it. It didn't look natural. And even this, now that I'm reviewing it again, I still think it might be a little too bright. I'm finding I think her skin tones, just in the general sense, are sitting a little too, a little too high on my scope. If I were to go into my waveform here, you could probably see it. I think they're gonna be sitting a little too high. So I'm gonna go back into here, go into my corrections, and maybe I'll even just drop the exposure entirely. Just do something like this. Bring the whole thing down a bit. Somewhere in there. And then bring my shadows up, maybe? No. Shadows, somewhere around there. Maybe I'll bring my whites up now. Something like that. And hit play. Let's see. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm still not sure if I'm happy with that. I think. I think I want the highlights back and then bring the whites down. So like I said, this is kind of like a, a little bit of back and forth. You're going to have to play with it. You're never just going to get it right away. I found that especially um, with brand new footage you haven't worked on before, you're going to want to go back and forth and really refine the look. And of course, as time goes on, things will become faster for you. You'll have a natural eye for things. And you know, it's always a developing process. Um, but you know what, I'm thinking that looks pretty, pretty solid. Is it absolutely perfect? Maybe not. And it may not suit your tastes. You know, you might say, hey, that's a little too dark. You might say it's a little too bright. There's too much contrast. I want to go with something that's a little softer. Again, that's all personal preference. Uh, in this case, I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. I might even add a little bit of fade to it just to kind of give it a bit of a lighter tone. Something like, like that. Get a little bit more of that film look again. Hmm. Maybe something like that. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now here again, you can play with color wheels if you want to start doing some more uh, specific color grading. Same thing with HSL secondary. This is where you can do more like keying, keying people's skin, making uh, adjustments to the skin tones, things like that. It's going to be outside the scope of today's video. I'm actually going to end it here. Well, that concludes the video. Uh, like I said, this is my workflow within Premiere when taking footage from analog to Rec. 709. Now, is it the 100% perfect way to do it? Maybe not. Is there a 100% perfect way to do it? No. There are so many different ways to achieve a look, and really it depends on what works best for you. Are you able to get the look that you want at the end of the day? If that's a yes, then you're doing it the right way. All that matters at the end of the day is how you deliver the footage. I found that this is the most simple way to do it, the most flexible way for me to do it. Um, and if you have actually any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, Nikon likes to support um, our fellow photographers and videographers by having open discussions. I hope that you're the same way and that you'll provide feedback not only to us, but also to anyone else watching this video if you have any suggestions. If there are any future video ideas or if there is anything in particular that you would like us to cover in a future video, please leave that in the comments as well. Uh, we do take a good look at them. We do take the suggestions uh, very seriously. Um, so who knows, your suggestion may end up being the next video we create. Thank you for watching.